First of all, I want to thank our administration, AD, uh, Jason Donnelly, everybody that was involved. Um, you know, the energy, the atmosphere, the student section, the whole, the whole operation to get these students here. I don't know, I don't know how, many, how many people play tonight, but I'm telling you what, you can put that atmosphere against anybody, right, especially at this level. Uh, but the, in terms of the energy in itself, uh, there's, there's, not, there's not many places that you could have gone tonight to watch a college basketball game and feel that energy. And so, um, you know, we, we've been preaching that. Let's just keep building this. You know, Greenville's going to continue to get behind it. The students you saw tonight got behind it, and uh, it was a big-time atmosphere. As far as the game goes, I've uh, got a lot of respect for that program, and it's a program, it's a coach that I've studied for a while and um, got on them when they were making that Final Four run and uh, just love the way they play and, and respect how they defend, respect how they move the ball, respect how they play together. And, um, you know, it, it's to beat an opponent by that margin of that quality. And um, it's a credit to our guys. It's a credit to our connection, our intensity, our effort, and uh, just us being committed, being able to play for 40 minutes. And uh, I thought that was the key tonight. I thought we were able to sustain our intensity. Didn't always play perfect, but we sustained our intensity. I didn't really feel any effort laws in the course of the 40 minutes, right? Were there mistakes? Absolutely. There's going to be mistakes. But as long as you can stay connected and you can go out there and you can play for brother and, and you can make sure that we just keep battling on both ends of the floor and we stay connected, good, good things will happen. And I think we saw that. They did a great job on Noah in the first half. I thought they did an excellent job. Their doubles were bothering us. And um, so we had, to, we had to come up with a couple of wrinkles out of the second half. And um, one of them continued to work a few possessions in a the row. They eventually called the double off. And then they kind of kept going back and forth to it. But uh, I thought once Noah got going, once, once this guy beside me got going, Jalen and his intensity and what he was able to do on both ends of the floor, I, just, I, can, I can go on and on about all of our players. I thought everybody had a big role in this victory tonight. So uh, with that, I'll take questions. Coach, you've beaten, uh, we're only two games into this thing, but you've beaten two quality teams. Two leading scores from the first game, or among your top four scores tonight, it says a lot about this team. Does not. It says a lot about this team and Scott. I mean, it's a credit to the program, and and that's. I think hopefully at some point we quit getting asked these questions in the off season. You know, in terms of what are you going to do about the, without this guy? That's this whole program is built on connection, and this whole program is built on dying to self and being connected to your teammate and understanding that's how we got to play, that's how we got to operate. And so whoever, whoever's hot, right? We don't know the matchups. We don't know who's going to be getting going. Uh, we got a lot of pieces. We got a lot of weapons out there. And so we got to get in the game and see what's working. And um, we got some guys, obviously Jordan is an, an elite guard. He's one of the best guards in the country. So he's going to get going. <coughs> uh, Noah's proven what he can do in, in these two games. Obviously, you see Slauson's improvement. We know what Alex can do and how he – I thought he did a good job keeping pressure and probing tonight. And then, I'll, obviously, Clay. I mean, Clay, let me just say this. I, I think we took him out there at the end. Yeah, he played 38 minutes tonight, okay? And the toughness for him to have to go guard Crutwig in the second half and to not get a sub and to play with the energy and the intensity he did, I can't say enough about him. And, and you know, to, to what you're saying, right, like every night who's going to step up, I don't know. But that's why I love coaching this group, and that's the danger of this team. Um, we talk about bottle questions a lot. Um, there was an inordinate amount of that in the first half. Can you just talk about how this team, that, this team last year was very good defensively. How is this team different? <coughs> Excuse me. I think this team's a little faster. You know, I think this team, you know, has a little bit more speed. You know, we haven't been as tight in some of our rotations as, as last year's team was at this point, but that's okay. You know, and what I've tried to convince them is we've been working at it really hard in practice. And what I've tried to convince them is, hey, we just got to use our speed and our length to our advantage. And, and I think that's what you see out there. I mean, Jordan's actually got really good length to him, right? And then you throw Clay, Slauson, and Gurley out there, and then you got Clark coming off the bench, and then you got another 6'3 guard and Bothwell coming off the bench. It's a long group. And, um, you know, they, they – they're showing that they're enjoying it, right? That, that they try to, you got to make defense fun and you got to fly around. And so, yeah, we had 13 deflections a half and uh, we, we forced, I believe, I can't remember how many, I, I believe we almost had forced 13 turnovers a half with those deflections. Um, and so they were shooting basically 60% in the first half, but they weren't getting many attempts. And so our halftime discussion was, hey, it's, it's kind of feast or famine for us right now. So. If we don't turn them over, they're scoring. So we got to tighten up a few things in our coverages so that we can make them miss. 
And then if we can continue to get deflections, we're going to be able to make a run. And I think that's eventually what happened. I thought we were a little bit more sound in our coverages in the second half. And um, so they weren't getting as many clean looks. They shot, what, 48% in the second half, which, which isn't great. Uh, but we held them to four threes on the night. So, you know, that was I, was, I was getting asked last few days by everybody, you know, are you going to double him? And, uh, you know, I just, I believe in this guy right here. I do. I'm just telling y'all, this guy's a player. He's a stud and he's going to keep getting better. And, you know, I'm going to tell y'all that you'll like this. I've never had this happen as an assistant or as a head coach. But we watched filming here today at 2.30, which we always do. We walk through at 3. And uh, we went over just the three keys. And, and one of them, obviously, was we had to limit Crowley's catches. And um, I told him he's got him, right? And we're not going to go double coverage. And we're not going to blitz early. And I was getting asked all kind of questions about it. And I'm walking from here to the walkthrough. And he texts me. He said, Coach, relax. I've got it. And when I got that text, I said, you know what? First of all, I've never had a player do that. And second, if he's texting me that, he's for real, right? He's dialed in. And, um, I th and, and it's just for him to do that and what he's done this offseason, I mean, I can go on and on about how proud I am of him. Uh, but his, his effort and Clay's effort on him, we really, I think we, sent, I think we sent three blitzes on the night, I believe. We turned them over once on it. But we were able to go single coverage, and we held him to five shots. Jalen, I was wondering from a player's perspective. <coughs> Jordan hit a three with 10, 10 and a half to go to put you guys up by 12. And so you're led by double digits the rest of the way. When you're in a basketball game at that point, when somebody's leaving by 12, somebody either comes back or you do what you guys did tonight. What's the player's mindset at that point to try to finish a game out and the way that you guys did? Um, well, we talked about it uh, in our walkthrough last year. Uh, what was it, 34 to 6? The run was they yeah, went on last yeah, year. They, they made a thirty-four to six run on us at their place. So he told us that it was going to be a game of runs. Um, so with ten minutes left, up twelve, that's still anybody's game. And he was telling us to stay locked in. Every media, he was telling us this game's not over. Um, that's that's that, that's not even a question. It's like you you just you have to stay locked in. It's something you have to do. It's not an option to. They bang one three. You come down, they get one turnover, and then it's two, three possession ball game. Coach, in the first half, you forced those 13 turnovers. You only had eight points off of them, and you finish. Second half, you forced nine turnovers and had 13 points off those. I think you just kind of settled in a little bit more, and that go coincide with the defense you played in the second half as well. Yeah, I mean, I think when you look at the stat sheet, there's a ton of factors. I mean, obviously, you know, we shot 64% in the <coughs> second half, which means the quality of shot that we were getting. I mean, I thought. I thought we got a ton of layups, and I thought most of the threes we took were pretty, pretty open. And um, you know, I thought I thought our ability to take care of the ball was critical to go a game with just nine turnovers. And then basically because of that, they only scored two points in transition, right? So the difference in the game, in my opinion, was our ability to get out and run on some of those breaks. I think we had 18 points in the in the fast break, and they had two. And I think that's a huge difference in the game. We were able to use our our speed and our length to be able to get some stops and to get out and run and finish. And then I thought we did a heck of a job in defensive transition. And, um, you know, Coach Groh and Coach Johnson, you know, have, have done a great job in improving our transition defense. And, um, you know, Xavier, that's a big deal in their deal. And um, we've spent a lot of time on it. And, and I, th I thought last year when they made their run up there, a lot of it was our, our inability to, to defend transition. And uh, tonight we did a really, really good job getting back and just trying to make it a half-court game. You know, he's obviously matured, you know, I mean, he, he's gotten better. All the sophomores have gotten better. Um, but I tell you, one of the best things about Mike is his, he's just savvy. I mean, he's got, he's just got savvy. And, and I love players that have feel and instinct. And he's got that. And, um, you know, that was a deal. I don't know how many minutes did he play tonight. He played 19. Um, you know, I thought he should have played more Gardner-Webb. Once I, once I watched the film, I thought, I thought he deserved a few more minutes. He had eight points up there in 16 minutes. And um, so, so we, we, we ran with them a good bit. They were, they were, they were playing off Clark in the paint, and, and they were clogging up some of our stuff with his man. And Trey, Trey played phenomenal. Trey played with great effort, and, and he was great on defense. We just thought 
schematically we had to put another shooter out there just to just to get that guy out of the paint. And so that's why Mike played a lot of those minutes in the second half. And um, once we were able to spread that paint out, I thought I thought that was huge for our cutting and our drives. What does it mean to you know, play the defense you guys did, especially in the second half? You had eight fouls in the first half, but only four in the second, and they only went to the line three times. Yeah, I mean that's something we that's something we preach a lot is just disciplined aggression. You know, and that's something that we talk about in our program. How how often? All right. Every day. Every day. <coughs> right. And and just to have aggression is not good enough. Um, you know, just to have discipline sometimes can make you passive. So we want disciplined aggression. And um, you know, I thought we we talk about verticality plays at the rim, not fouling guys at the rim, forcing them to sh make score over our length. And and so we try. To, we've done a good job trying to stay on our feet. I thought we did a decent job of that tonight. That's just you know when you foul down there and it's and it's and you're playing hard and you swipe down and you put them on the line, that's just not a good basketball play, right? It's it's really really hard to score over an athlete like this that when he jumps straight up and he shows verticality and they got to make that layup and we can board it and then get, guess what we get to do? We get to run, right? And so again, just just communicating that daily and what we do, and um, to be honest with you, we've grown a lot there in a short period of time. We've done it. We've done a drill daily to try to improve that because uh, he and Noah got in foul trouble in both of our scrimmages. And um, we've really challenged them to play cleaner down there. And to their credit, they've done a great job with it. Jalen, um, last year, obviously, you didn't have as much chance to play as you've gotten this year so far. Um, but you made two three-pointers last year. This year, you, you hit one apiece, but you've hit them early in the games. How does shoot, making a shot like that early on affect your game for the rest of the night? I mean, they got to kind of respect you out there. That frees up things, doesn't it? Yes, sir. Absolutely. Um, I think after after my first one, he uh, we talked about it in film. Um, he we knew he was gonna slough off, so I took the first up one I got. And I think I missed that one, and uh, one of our assistants told me just to keep shooting, and I took my second one, hit it, and then that really opened up the floor a lot for me to to drive him. Um, you know, he's. He was somewhat. He was somebody we thought we could exploit on the defensive end, uh, on the perimeter. So uh, after I hit my first one, he had to respect it a little bit more. Open up the floor a lot for me to drive and penetrate. He's worked on his three a ton in the off season, and you know that's that's why he's at the five because it gives us ability to put five shooters out there. And it's like I told him when I made the decision. You know, hopefully everybody in the world saw that last year our five's not really a five. You know, I mean, it's it's. Uh, <coughs> Matt's not a five, you know. It's we we play with forwards and we play with guards, and um, he took the role, he embraced it. That's why he's starting, and that's why it allows Noah to stay at the four. And uh, I tell you, you know, I don't know. How, I'll keep asking questions as long as you want. I'm in no hurry to leave, but I don't want to forget this. Jordan Lyons, I mean, what a night. Okay, please, please understand, right? The plays that he made on two feet tonight, and the passes that he got, and the five assists that he got. Okay. I understand you're going to want to write about the 24 points. But he hit me after Gardner Webb. He said, I Coach, I want to watch film with you. And we watched, we watched the one-foot plays. And I just told him, I said, look, just go out there and just drive it and just keep two feet on the ground and pivot and pass. And you'll be amazed. They're going to flow to you, right? They're going to, they're going to think that you're just going to, you're going to, you're going to go in there trying to score. You'll be amazed how it's going to loosen up for you. And then, man, he had some great two-foot plays early in the game. And he found guys. So then in the second half, guess what? How many drives did he get from the perimeter to the rim, right? And that's just a guy trusting. That's a guy understanding that, hey, you know, I've got to go play the game the right way, and i got to let it come to me. And so guess what? He gets 24 points. He gets five assists. He only turns it over three times. I mean, that's a really, really good assist turnover rate. He gets three steals, right? He goes six for eight from the line, two for seven from three, eight for 13 from the field. That's a complete game, right? And, and Jordan Lyons is a complete player. All right, and he's worked at it. He cares. He leads, and I'm really, really proud of what he did out there tonight. One more question about the big shooting ability this year, but also I thought two big plays in the second half tonight. I think Noah had a bounce pass to Jordan for a layup. I think uh, Jalen had a bounce pass. I think that Jordan also down low. Yep. So it's not only their shooting ability outside, but their ability to. And you don't see a lot of guards that make bounce passes anymore in these days. Yep. Yep. Kind of talk about that a little bit. Well, you know. I know, look, we're all excited, but I'll give you all good, another good story. So when, when, when I was recruiting him, I don't even know if I've told him this before, but he, uh, he was playing AAU, and everybody was recruiting him as a three. And I, I remember exactly where I was at. I was sitting at the Marriott in Greensboro, and I just watched him 
play, and he had two of the nastiest dunks in the AAU game. And he's out there floating around the perimeter, but in transition, he'd go in there and he would bang one, bang one. I'm by myself. I don't have an assistant with me. We're recruiting another kid on the team, and it just hits me. I'm sitting there eating by myself a, a Marriott burger or something. I'm like, you know what? That guy's a five in our stuff, and he's going to be a nightmare. And I called the staff. I said, we're recruiting the wrong guy. Okay, I want this guy, and here's where I want him, and here's how I want to use him. And we sold it to him, and we convinced him of it. And, and that's why, you know, what we saw this offseason, his ability to pass, right? Like, it's great that he can dunk, and it's great that he can run, but his instincts are really good, and he just needs more reps, right? And, and he's got great instincts. You see that when he goes and blocks shots, but you also see some of his passes. And what I had to tell him tonight was, hey, don't, don't try to thread so many needles, right? Just take the singles. Because first half, I mean, the one down there to Clay, I mean, Clay was open for a second. That's a really hard play to make, right? And for him to be able to complete that is incredible. But just make the simple one. And I thought he did a couple. I thought he did that in the second half. I thought he just made the easy plays. But he's a great passer. And so, um, and Noah's gotten better at passing. We we dribble, pass, and shoot every day. You know, that's kind of what we do. And um, you know, for 30 minutes a day, these guys are going to dribble, pass, and shoot. It doesn't matter if it's April. It doesn't matter if it's if it's December, right? We're going to dribble, pass, and shoot. And um, you know, that's that's how we play. We want five guys out there that can dribble, pass, and shoot. And um, you know, that's how we recruit, and it's it's fun to watch. That's it. We're good. We're good. Hey, last last thing, just just another thanks, and um, you know, students keep keep with it. All right, don't don't just come to Loyola. Greenville, get behind it. Let's um let's keep Timmons like that. That's fun for everybody, and um, you know, we just we look forward to continuing to grow this thing, and we have an environment like that. That's that's big time, and uh, that's a credit to everybody.